I want to reiterate our government's commitment to the rights of citizens. Acts of hooliganism in the name of lawful and peaceful protests will not be condoned. President Buhari cautions. A situation in which foreign broadcast stations are to themselves with power to tell our own story, to give room for discussion and fact. Information and Minister urges indigenous broadcast outfits to tell the Nigerian stories to counter distortion of facts by some foreign media. Our mission as custodians of population health is to build a health system that guarantees availability of universal access. Plus, better help basic health care delivery ahead as federal government unveils revised implementation guidelines. Good evening and welcome to the Network News at 9. Glad to have you join us once again. I am Kenen Ima Awolike with the news. I won't be doing this alone. We have Michael Olaleye waiting in Lagos. We'll begin with security matters where President Muhammad Buhari has warned that any act of hooliganism hiding behind lawful and peaceful protests will be dealt with decisively. Declaring the Lopun the 2020 Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference virtually, the President was emphatic there is no compromise on the peace and stability of the country. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports. I want to reiterate our government's commitment to the rights of citizens to embark on peaceful protests. However, this must be done responsibly and in accordance with the laws of the land. President Muhammad Buhari may have been responding to reports on plans by NSAS protesters to return to the streets for another round of protests. He commended the armed forces for their efforts at swiftly restoring law and order during what he called the large-scale criminality that ensued in the wake of the last protests in parts of the country. Let me also use this opportunity to commend the army for its unwavering commitment towards curtailing the activities of insurgents, armed bandits, kidnappers, cattle rustlers, and other violent criminals through ongoing exercises and operations in different parts of the country. Notably, the Exercise Sahel Sanity launched a few months back in the Northwest states to raid the Casina Zamfara corridor of marauding bandits. I am happy to note that the commendable progress has been made towards attaining the objectives of the exercise. The president also noted the tremendous successes achieved by troops during the ongoing Operation Fireball in the Northeast, insisting that these efforts be sustained until the full restoration of peace and security. And with the establishment of the state-of-the-art Cyber Warfare Operations Center, President Buhari said the army in particular has remained alive to the changing nature of warfare, which is gradually moving into the cyber domain. I commend the visionary leadership that has worked assiduously to emplace this vital capability that will fill an existing gap in our nation's security and defense architecture. On our part, I assure you that this administration will continue to do all within available resources to provide for your operational and welfare needs. We must strengthen our collective resolve to address those issues that will make every part of our country a safe and secure place to live and carry out 
our normal businesses. The president is delighted that some of the major capabilities procured for the army will soon be inducted into the various theater of operations as many more await shipment to the country. The conference has as its theme human capacity development in sustaining professionalism and responsiveness of the Nigerian army in the discharge of its constitutional rules. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. The headquarters of the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command in Gari Military Cantonment has been inaugurated. The virtual inauguration of the project by President Muhammad Buhari is part of activities marking the 2020 Chief of Army Staff Conference held in, in Abuja. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has details. As the year 2020 gradually winds down, principal officers, heads of units and formations in the Nigerian Army assembled to evaluate operations and administration of the force for enhanced projection in coming year. The armed forces of Nigeria and the Nigerian Army in particular have been in the forefront of efforts to restore peace in the country. This conference is focused on human resource development to sustain professionalism and improve responsiveness of the Nigerian Army in the discharge of its constitutional rules. Within the period under review, the Nigerian Army embarked on massive infrastructural development, undertook further force restructuring, conducted several local and overseas training, carried out various operations as well as optimized logistics and its support elements, amongst others. On the sidelines of the Chief of Army Staff Conference, the sacrifice of officers and soldiers killed in combat were recognized and a foundation laying ceremony of a housing scheme for the families of the deceased also took place side by side with the inauguration of a new office complex for the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command in Giri Military Cantonment. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. At the meantime, the Directorate of Defense Media Operations, DMO, says the air component of Operation Thunderstrike has obliterated another camp and neutralized several armed bandits at the Kosasu area of Kaduna State. DMO coordinator Major General John Nenche says this was achieved through airstrikes executed on December 6, 2020 after human intelligence reports and a series of aerial surveillance missions led to the identification of the camp of a bandit leader known as al Haji Labi, an associate of Dogon Gede, another notorious bandit leader in Katsina State. Nigerian Air Force fighter aircraft attacked the location, delivering devastating hits which destroyed the bandit structures and neutralized several armed bandits. The armed forces of Nigeria says it remains resolute along with other agencies in the fight against banditry and other crimes. Now the House of Representatives says that any statement that does not emanate from the recognized minority leadership or majority leadership caucus does not reflect position of members and should therefore be disregarded. In a statement, Chairman of the House Committee on Media and Publicity, Benjamin Carlos, says comments in circulation calling for the President's impeachment credited to Representative Kingsley Chinder of the PDP does not represent even the weakest of opinion of the minority caucus of the Ninth House as it lost that opportunity having failed to secure the position of minority leader now occupied by Ndudi Elumelu. The statement stressed that the House will not be distracted and remains focused to have an interactive session with Mr. President to enable members make inputs to solutions he is seeking. Members of the National Assembly from Kaduna State have advocated for restructuring of the country's security architecture and introduction of community policing to tackle security challenges bedeviling the country. This was during a security meeting with the Kaduna State Executive Council members, traditional rulers and local government chairman in Kaduna. Muhammad Umar Ajingi was there. Worried by the level of insecurity in the state, the lawmakers are back home at this meeting with key stakeholders with a view to finding solutions to the issue. 
so their constituents can enjoy peace without fear of being attacked by government. Senators Ubasani and Abdul Kori, along with their House of Representatives counterparts, were briefed by the State Commissioner of Internal Security, Samuel Arwan, on efforts being made by the state government and security agencies. At the end of the meeting, Senator Ubasani briefed journalists on far-reaching decisions. The first step to be taken is uh, to look into the structuring. Uh, for me, restructuring means different things for different people. Because we believe there must be state police who do want to solve the problem of insecurity in this country. It was resolved that the security engagement meeting will be held with other critical stakeholders until lasting peace is restored to Kaduna State. I am Muhammad Murajinki, NTA News. Away from security matters now, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has challenged broadcast practitioners in a country to take the lead in telling the Nigerian story in order to guard against distortion of facts by a section of the foreign media. The minister gave the charge at the inauguration of Ogoilu 89.3 FM station on the stable of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria in Okon, Oyo State. Anthony Fosin completes the story. Calling on the nation's broadcasters to take the lead in telling the Nigerian story, especially by informing the people about the various programs and policies of government and their impact on the people. A situation in which foreign broadcast stations arrogate to themselves the power to tell our own story, to give room for distortion of facts, the type of which we saw recently when CNN reported that there's eight people he was quick to note that a situation where local media organizations rely on foreign media and even quote them is dangerous and must stop. To underscore the power of radio, the minister referred to this website, www.lifelineenergy.org, which says radio goes where new technology can't, making it the most potent way of delivering information to remote areas where having the right knowledge can make the difference between harvest and hunger. And the local broadcast media make up its billion. CNN, we have relied on them for news about NSAS in particular and other happenings in Nigeria in general. He commended the Chairman House Committee on Information, National Orientation, Ethics and Values, Olushego Odebumi, for initiating the project, which is today the first radio station to come on stream by a parliamentarian. What we are commissioning today, we hopefully remove our people from the circle of lack of proper information-based ignorance to a new down of well-informed society. Director General of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, Mansur Liman, expressed gratitude to President Muhammad Buhari. We, the management of FRCN, can only say a big thank you for everything that you have done and continue to do to make sure that FRCN gets the right funding within the limited resources of the government to be able to discharge our responsibility of providing information, educating people, and also entertaining the larger populace. Religious and traditional rulers who graced the occasion all expressed gratitude to the federal government and the member representing their constituency, saying they now have the capacity to listen and be listened to. Anthony Forson, NTA News. Let's talk health. Towards a universal health care service delivery and coverage and affordability, stakeholders are sourcing for health care funds from available avenues. Kolo Mohammed reports that the Federal Ministry of Health unveiled the revised implementation guideline for basic health care provision fund at a media briefing in Abuja. Nigerian healthcare sector's next level agenda is to have Nigerians at all sectors enjoy affordable healthcare service delivery wherever they are in the country. Minister of Health says the federal government is looking at securing the present and the future of Nigerians health-wise. Our mission as custodians of population health is to build a health system that guarantees availability of universal access to appropriate, equitable, comprehensive, affordable, efficient, and quality health care for Nigerians. Stakeholders, donor agencies, and support partners specified areas of strength in how to improve current efforts. 
the revised implementation guideline for basic health care provision fund for the country was unveiled. In Abuja, Kolo Mohammed, NTA News. And to give us more insight, join me in welcoming the Minister of Health, Dr. Osagie Hanire, on Network News tonight. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, we, just, we just watched your report on, uh, uh, where you were briefing uh, the media on government's agenda to deliver the universal health coverage to Nigerians. Now, can you speak more on that agenda? And by that we mean, what is Mr. President's health agenda? Well, the agenda is universal health coverage, as you just uh, mentioned. And to have universal health coverage, first you must have the platforms, that is to say you must have the facilities where uh, pe people can attend. Secondly, you must have the human resource for health, uh, doctors, nurses and community health workers. Then you must have the financing, the health financing. All of these are brought together by the various divisions and uh, agencies of the government. The primary health care development agency works to create one primary health care development, one primary health care center in every ward. The National Health Insurance uh, Scheme is working to uh, set up a financing mechanism to be able to deliver health care. And then we work with the state governments and local governments to provide the human resource for health who will operate these uh, primary health care centers and uh, provide health closer to the people. You mentioned the financing aspect of the project. How do you intend to achieve that, especially with the COVID-19 changing everything globally? Well, the COVID-19, for one thing, has been a big uh, disruption of activities, but has also afforded opportunity to recalibrate, to review your health system. Uh, even before COVID-19, His Excellency the President had approved the Basic Health Care Provision Fund, which is 1% of consolidated revenue. And uh, the National Health Insurance Scheme uh, uh, launched a, a project called the GIF SHIP. That is to say, it's a group insurance for individuals, families, and uh, for uh, communities who will pay a, minim a minimum amount of 15,000 per year to be able to access uh, health care. This is voluntary, and uh, there is a law. Uh, expected very soon on mandatory health insurance for Nigerians. Now, Nigerians will be wondering how the poorest of the poor uh, will be able to key in. Yeah, that's exactly where the Basic Health Care Provision Fund comes in. It is supposed to provide uh, free, when I say free, I mean that they don't have to pay it, the state pays it, free service. Uh, we have a social register that tells us who are the poorest of the poor, and the Basic Health Care Provision Fund is uh, the a pool for those uh, that category of Nigerians. No one will be left behind. No doubt this project requires commitment, you know, uh, by all. So what are the modalities to achieving synergy towards success? Very good. One of the uh, modalities is this uh, media event we just had and that will bring everybody together, all those who are uh, playing in this field, uh, to understand each other, to understand where the government wants to go and particularly the relationship with the state governments because at uh, the end of the day they play a role in actually overseeing the delivery at community level. So we are working on uh, improving the relationship and at the same time working with our partners, development partners and those who wish to support us uh, uh, from outside the country and either technically or financially for them to know where government wants to go and to know where they want to key in and how they want to key in. So in that regard, what support do you want for the ordinary Nigerian in this project? Well, the support is first of all the understanding that it is there. Number one. And then to call for uh, participation of all those who are able to, uh, the contribution by the National uh, Health Insurance Scheme, for example, and then the uh, cooperation with the local authorities in uh, running and managing and overseeing the primary health care center when they are set up in the communities. Thank you very much for speaking with us here on the news tonight, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much for inviting me and for the opportunity to clarify. All right. We'll be talking with the Minister of Health, Dr. Osagir Ehaniri. Time to take time out for some messages. The news continues in a moment. Stay with the NTA. <laughs>
Join PSB. Open an account right away with your phone number and instantly start to send and receive money by dialing star 990 hash. You can even pay your bills and also enjoy more opportunities to get your cash back through any of our nationwide agents near you. My honeycomb, my flavored chocolate, a yakma for you now. Nah. I'm coming. Come, let me spoil you. Look, this is not boil or abscess. Now, money. I salute to our membership registration don't start. We they call on all our members where they all over Nigeria to confirm say they be member of our party during this exercise. We go start from December 12, 2020, reach January 9, 2021. All our members will never register and those where they hungry to join our party fit use this opportunity to take join. The registration will take place for all the worlds where they are states for the same time. No waste time. Join our party so that you go fit contribute to progress and better governance for our country. My country people, no forget say if you join our party today, it will give you power to contest for election and play role for the government of our country. In never finish you, if you register, you go even get power to choose who will be our party candidate for all our political positions for government. Go register now. Give yourself power. Do am now. Dear Nigerians, from the 7th to 11th of December 2020, the federal government will be implementing measles second dose of 15 months as part of the routine immunization schedule across the 19 northern states and the FCT. The measles second dose has already been introduced by the government in the 17 southern states since November 2019. Apart from the usual first dose of measles at 9 months old, all eligible children 15 months old would be required to take the second dose of measles vaccine. Measles has infected and killed many. As parents, we must forsake all doubts and visit the nearest health facility or vaccination post to ensure our children are vaccinated. I want to assure you that vaccines given to our children are safe, potent, and effective. Signed, Dr. Faisal Shuaib, Executive Director, Chief Executive Officer, National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Imagine the joy that fills your heart when you have just given birth. Whatever your size, we got you. chat you can get the best mattress that goes with your body weight don't just buy a mattress buy a vitafoam mattress the name of the baby is Stella. vitafoam the fine art of living there are no 
small beginnings, only stepping stones to bigger things. That's our philosophy at Premium Pension. And so no matter the size of your money, our team of expert fund managers invested wisely and actively to make sure your money is always working as hard as you do. After all, the things we're building today can help shape your future in the long run. And with the right partner by your side, the one thing you're sure to do is so premium pension. Active today, premium tomorrow. Get all the nutrients that we need from plants. ingredients and rich flavor of no that brings people together welcome back Nigerian startups have joined over 200 of their counterparts from more than 60 countries in participating at the 40th Gulf Information Technology Exhibition GTEx 2020 taking place in Dubai World Trade Center ICT correspondent Joseph Johnson who is there for us reports that the event, which has as its theme, inspiring the next decade of breakthroughs, reinforces post-pandemic recovery, offering the over 100,000 visitors a real-life platform to explore opportunities and challenges beyond COVID-19. Just like in 2019, a total of 10 Nigerian startups are participating in this year's JITEX and they will be exploring networking opportunities with over 200 global innovators and accelerators. We are not here to participate just to see what has been taking place, but rather to ensure that uh, we get more investors that are willing to invest in Nigeria and secondly to get technology transfer. This is an opportunity for us to showcase our talented startups and also to learn from other countries what are they doing to prepare themselves for the post-COVID era. 2020 has unarguably been a year of unprecedented times as a result of coronavirus pandemic. But despite the fact the 40th anniversary of JITEX is the only major life in person technology event of the year. From observations, there is strict compliance with uh, COVID-19 safety protocols, to the teeth many say, which has given participants a sense of confidence to be here and partake in several outlined activities, deep tech areas that have been cocooned will now birth the next decade technology from the World Trade Center in Dubai. Joseph Johnson, NTA News. Thanks, Joseph. Now, every 7th of December is observed as the International Civil Aviation Day. It is celebrated worldwide to reinforce awareness of the role and importance of international civil aviation organization in air travel across the globe. Correspondent Emmanuel Ayimiro brings us the focus of the day. Every five years, the International Civil Aviation Organization, Akao Kansu, establishes a special anniversary theme for the International Civil Aviation Day. Advancing innovation for global aviation development has been the focus since 2019 and this we run into 2023. How is Nigeria keen into this aviation technology? Advancing airspace technology in Nigeria will move forward from total radar coverage to CPDLC, the cockpit pilot data link, and to equally um, uh, surveillance uh, area airspace control. In line with the theme of the year, Minister of Aviation Hadis Sirika in the statement is urging 
stakeholders to see Nigeria Aviation Roadmap as a catalyst for a comprehensive overhaul of the aviation industry in the country. He says the idea is to position the country as an air transportation hub within the West and Central Africa sub-region. The minister confirms that the roadmap, which includes the establishment of a national carrier, maintenance, repair and overhaul facilities, concession of some airports, and establishment of an aviation leasing company are expected to lay solid and lasting foundation for aviation development in Nigeria. Emmanuel Ayemiru, NT News. Let's now join Michael Olaleye in Lagos. Hello, Michael. Kene, apprehension was high among Lagos residents earlier this Monday as rumors of another round of NSAS protests went viral. Lin Neneke, who monitored the situation at the Lekito Gate in Lagos, reports that there was total calm along the axis. The ambience at Lekito Gate depicted normal vehicular movement with no indication of gathering of any group of people as against insinuations of regrouping of NSAS protesters, with warnings coming from the Inspector General of Police that the country can no longer risk another round of protests, police officers and other security operatives were on red alerts. I think it's not going to be fine at this period of time. Judging by the instances, those things that we faced the other time, those are that is where properties were looted, where houses were destroyed. I think personally, it's not necessary for us to have the second um, protest of NSAS because the, the normal frequent harassment of SAS on boys and girls, even general, even adults, not only young people, it's not rampant again. The NSAS, me, I know it is a part of that one. October 20th, 2020 remains a day to remember as it marks as still noticeable on Lekki Toll Gate, which was once a revenue generating venture in Lagos. Lane Lenake, NTA News. The issue of irregular power supply over and under billing will soon become a thing of the past. This follows the recent launch of an electricity innovation distribution power enhancement panel by MoMA's electricity meter manufacturing company in Ogun State. Annie Daniels has details. This electricity meter manufacturing company since coming on board 25 years ago has been a trailblazer in the electricity and engineering sectors. Milestone achievements by the company include initiating prepayment metering in 1995, pioneer manufacturer of indigenous prepaid meter, first to design and develop billing and prepayment metering applications in Nigeria, the first to manufacture Nigerian-made Wi-Fi meter, as well as the leading innovator of presidential next level look past substation enhancement panel across all distribution companies not resting on its hours the company has again unveiled the distribution power enhancement panel and dual tariff meter that panel means that there can be mis misgrid hybrid in such a way that PSCN or the disco will have power if they don't have power another source of power can come in it can be a renewable power it can be solar it can be wind it can be any other form of power that will be infused into that panel aware that skin is power the company granted free training to over 200 young nigerians drawn from across the nation in meter installation meter audit management artificial intelligence and embedded system design and communication skills among others i've never been in a position where i've been exposed to learn the practical things like here in momas there were goodwill messages from some state governors energy experts and other industry players to create an enabling environment for public-private partnership. We are going to take this initiative into our arms around with it. Management of the company says MoMA's electric company will leave nothing to chance to ensure Nigeria's power sector competes favorably with its counterparts the world over. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports with Kenne shortly after this break. Please stay tuned.
Office of the Senate Committee on Finance, Custom, Excise and Tariff, Trade and Investment, and Public Procurement cordially invite stakeholders and the general public to the public hearing on the amendment of many acts. The public hearing is scheduled to hold as follows. Date Thursday, 10th December 2020, time 11 a.m. Venue, Conference Hall 231, Senate New Building, National Assembly Complex, Abuja. Consequently, top government officials are expected to make presentations at the hearing. Other stakeholders and interested persons and organizations who wish to make presentations should submit the memorandum on or before Wednesday, 9th December 2020 at the Joint Committee Secretariat in room SG23, Zero Floor, White House, National Assembly Complex, Abuja. For further inquiries, contact the Joint Committee Club on 0817-436-4772. For details on the bills, check the following national dailies. The Nation and Daily Trust newspapers, Monday 7th December 2020. The Sun and Punch newspapers of Tuesday 8th December 2020. Senator Solomon Olami Lekon Adeola, Chairman, Joint Committee, Announcer. It's your boy David O. See you at the All King Fest tonight. Sometimes, we need to power through the day because the world is your stage. And for you, impossibilities do not exist. Experience limitless possibilities with the all-new Infinix Note 8. Infinix, the future is now. What else shall I give you? Hot pepper and... <coughs> ah, 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 auntie, this your cough is getting out of hand now. Uh, take it easy with her now. Eh? Uh, but customer, this is your cough. You should go to the hospital. You know I can't go there with this cough at this time. They'll just say I have COVID-19. Customer. <coughs> Every cough is different. It could be tuberculosis. It's true, auntie. Check her more. Make you day sure. Because who no go? No go, no! Check that cough for tuberculosis. Check them all, check them all, make you If your cough is more than two weeks, it could be tuberculosis. TB test and TB treatment are free. Just call the National TB Hotline on 0800-2255282 for information on where to get the test. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Health with support from the American people. Congratulate you for progress on your journey, for all your efforts, for being creative and the best at anything you do. While taking care of your family, you also didn't give up taking care of yourself. For all your confident steps, we congratulate you and all Mofix mothers. You are always the number one. Now, Nigeria's number one choice of mothers have Mofix Air Dry. Thanks to its ultra-absorbency and breathability, Mofix has the dryness all the mothers dream of, so the babies will not experience any rash. Babies are always comfortable. Mothers are too, because they don't need to worry about ventilation. Thanks to Mofix Air Dry, now babies and mothers enjoy the ultimate peace. Come and join the mothers who experience Mofix Air Dry. Every day. Nestle, good food, good life. Wednesday, 
28 p.m. Getting ready to lay down some tunes, but something ain't right. There's some discomfort in my throat. No worries though. Tom Tom Fresh Lime is here to save the day. Discomfort gone. Time to bring the heat. Thanks, Tom Tom Fresh Lime, for giving me soothing relief. Tom Tom Fresh Lime. Cool with a zing. Always remember. This one I have my sense. I really like it. You deserve a break. Even in the hustle and bustle of the day, you can indulge in a cup of three in one Cadbury hot chocolate. Cadbury hot chocolate. Indulge. You deserve a break. It's your boy David O. See you at the All King Fest tonight. Sometimes we need to power through the day because the world is your stage. And for you, impossibilities do not exist. Experience limitless possibilities with the all-new Infinix Note 8. Infinix, the future is now. That match was crazy. Okwayo, okay, I won! One million naira, don't buy it! Wow! I told you, bro, honorable promo, don't buy it. It's real! Tunde, uh, what buy it? Uh, hey, my game! David! Yes, boy. Wild yeah. bag. Honorable! And my darling Joe. Wild bag. You could become the next millionaire in the honorable promo. Talk by ye to enter. Look under the crown cock of your bottle for a code. Then buy star 8011 star your code to enter for weekly draws where you could win free airtime and cash from 5,000 naira to 1 million naira. Honorable! Honorable promo. Talk by ye. Thank you for staying with us. President Muhammad Buhari has renominated Mr. Ahmed Kudu as managing director, Mr. Eberechuku Uneze, and Mr. Aminu Ismail as executive directors of the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCON, for the final term of five years. This was contained in a letter to the President of the Senate seeking the confirmation of the nominees. Similarly, in another letter, President Buhari is asking the Senate to confirm the nominations of Mr. Belo Hassan as the Managing Director and Mr. Mustafa Muhammad Ibrahim as Executive Director of the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC. The two nominees are to succeed Mr. Umaru Ibrahim and Prince Ahatise Eredua, whose second terms end on December 8, 2020 as Managing Director and Executive Director Operations, respectively. Meanwhile, Omolola Abiola Edowar is to continue as Executive Director of Corporate Services in the NDIC until her second and final term ends on January 24, 2020. Now, Boa Group has so far committed about 8 billion naira to the fight against COVID-19 in the areas of food supply, medical equipment, infrastructure and cash donations. Director of Government Relations of the Boa Group, Aliyu Idihong, disclosed this while presenting 50,000 face masks and three fully equipped ambulances to the Bochi state government. Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed reports. First and foremost, I should apologize to you. Aliu Idi Hong, the former state minister of health, presented the ambulances to Governor Bala Muhammad on behalf of the chairman Boa Group, Abdul Samad Ishak Rabiu. We are not out of it yet because in recent time we have seen even in Nigeria the numbers are increasing and all those proactive positions that the state government have been doing should continue and that is why he's given his own team to token support to the state. On his part, Governor Bala Muhammad commended Boa Group for rendering such humanitarian services that will boost not only the fight against COVID-19 but services in the state health sector. We are very, very appreciative. Convey our deepest appreciation and tell him that uh, we are readily available for any partnership that uh, he would want to do. Household name in terms of uh, uh, some of the items that he produces in this country. Governor Bala Muhammad has handed over the ambulances and face marks to the state tax force chairman on COVID 19 in Bauchi. Mahmoud Ibn Muhammad, NTA News. The chairman, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabri Erewa, wants women to be accorded equitable opportunities to complement their male counterparts in all affairs, especially in politics. This was at a media briefing ahead of the 2020 Women Happy Conference. 
keep saying women, we want this, we want that. But we need to put in the hard work. We need to put in that selflessness, that determination that you have put into setting up as far women. This historic intergenerational event, which will host more than 200 women, from secondary school students to veterans. The Happy Conference 2020 is aimed at generating discourse among women of all ages as encouraged by the Beijing Platform for Action. Let's go on a final break. Thanks for staying. Tough on stains. With longer lasting freshness. New Omo Extra Fresh with longer lasting freshness. Tough on stains. With longer lasting freshness. New Omo Extra Fresh with longer lasting freshness. Tough on stains. With longer lasting freshness. New Omo Extra Fresh with longer lasting freshness. Welcome to your online ballroom dance lesson. Nobody's perfect, but some are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. Power Horse, unstoppable you. With gratitude to God for a most remarkable and weather line, the Ndoma Egba, Onono family of Cross River State and Anambra State respectively announce the transition to eternal glory of our wife, mother, grandmother, sister, auntie, in-law and friend. Mrs. Emaka Laurette Ndoma Egba, Ni Onono, died on the 19th November 2020 at the age of 54 years. She was an entrepreneur and founder of Start Right Schools Abuja. She is survived by Senator Victor Ndo Udoma Eba, OFR, CON, SAN, former Senate leader and former chairman, NDDC, husband, Hugo and Ndoma Ndoma Eba, son and daughter in law, Zara Ndoma Eba, daughter, Kami Ndoma Eba, daughter, Adora August Ndoma Eba, granddaughter, Mrs. Ngozi Adoro, sister, Mr. Thomas Onno Jr. Brother, Mrs. Ifeyin Menkiti, sister, Mrs. Cynthia Edozie, sister, Miss Chiazo Ono, sister, many in laws, cousins, nieces, nephews, adopted children, the Ndoma Eba and Onono clans, and very close their friends. Burial arrangement, 6th December 2020, venue, Mirror Event Center, Block 135, Mustafa Bello Street, Zabi, Abuja, time 5 pm, record last, 9th December 2020. Venue, Church of Assumption, Sokuro, Abuja, time 4 p.m. Funeral Mass, 12 December 2020. Venue, Our Lady Queen of Peace Parish, Mabaramo, Ikom, Cross River State, time 10 a.m. Kindly forward all tributes and condolence message by 4th December 2020 to AmakaLeafsOn.gmail.com. Please note that all COVID-19 protocols will be strictly observed. Professor Roland Odoma Eba, for the family and not When babies arrive, they open the door to more blessings and more good things. So let's start your baby's journey in comfort with the Huggies Happy Home Bonanza. Win your baby a beautiful new home, a brand new car, up to a million in cash rewards, shopping vouchers and lots of instant airtime. Just buy any special Huggies pack. Scratch the promo sticker on pack to start winning. Buy now and win to bring your baby up in comfort. Huggies for all night dryness and comfort. In my house, we may look alike, but we are very different individuals. <laughs> my adorable twins, hmm, they look so alike, but they don't like wearing the same things. And my little man, <laughs> I had to find out the hard way because I've been trying to teach him my way. He loves to learn his own way because doing things his way is more fulfilling. Everybody believes their way is best. That's why Golden Penny Pasta is our favorite meal because due to its non-stickiness, it allows me to satisfy everybody just the way they want it. Golden Penny Pasta, made with durum wheat, is tasty, nutritious, a source of protein and fiber, and non-sticky. So you can cook, serve, and eat your pasta just the way you like it. Go on and enjoy your Golden Penny Pasta the way you want it. With Golden Penny Pasta, your way is best. Mommy is back! Guess what's inside? Chocolate! Biscuits! Our new 
toothpaste. Colgate Maximum Cavity Protection. Why are we changing our toothpaste? Because with Colgate Maximum Cavity Protection, I can be sure your teeth are cavity free. Cavity? What cavity? Let me show you. Most toothaches are caused by tooth holes called cavity. Ah! When you brush daily with Colgate Maximum Cavity Protection, its expert formula locks natural calcium in our teeth and helps protect them from cavity. It also has natural mint for minty fresh breath every day. Mom, can I eat chocolate now? As long as you brush with Colgate Maximum Cavity Protection. Colgate is the world's most chosen toothpaste. Colgate locks calcium in... Keeps cavities out! Recommended by the Nigerian Dental Association. Collation of ballots continues following the presidential and parliamentary elections today in Ghana. Correspondent Musba with Ganwa have reports from Accra that the exercise has been significantly peaceful across the capital of Ghana. Ghana has maintained a stern stand against COVID-19 spread and in this election too, no compromise. From the eyes of a former Liberian president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, a pool of observers across the country, ECOWAS has kept close watch of the situation. It has started on time, the photos are moving, the officials, the polling, uh, the representation, the agents of the parties are all here. So for us, it's moving well. It's in the Ghana tradition of a smooth voting process. Ghana Electoral Commission promises to release the results of this election in 24 hours, but a candidate must poll more than 50% of the total vote cast to emerge winner and avoid a runoff election. In Accra, Ghana, Muspal, and Wahab, NC News. Bade Adelaya will now bring us sports update. President Muhammad Buhari has commiserated with the family and friends of renowned business mogul and presidential aspirant of the then All People's Party, APP, Chief Hari Akonde, who passed on over the weekend. The president described Chief Hari Akonde as a public-spirited investor who, over the years, registered his kindness in helping the deprived and underprivileged. President Buhari believes Chief Akonde's role in the nation's development remains remarkable and commendable, particularly his contributions to infrastructural development. The president joins the deceased family, friends and business associates in praying for the repose of his soul. The death has been announced of an educationist, community leader and devout Christian, Professor Ralph Chiemeka Wakedi of Uruekwo village in Njikoka local government area of Anambra state, aged 82. Bear arrangements released by the Kennedy and Mekanwakedi on behalf of the family indicate that there will be commendation service at All Saints Anglican Church, GRA Enugu, by 5 p.m. on Thursday, 10th of December. Friday, December 11th, Lion State at the deceased residence in Uruekwo village by 8 a.m. This will be followed by a reception. The burial will be rounded off on Sunday, 13th of December, with an outing service at St. Andrew Anglican Church, Uruekwo village. Before we go, a quick check on the weather report for Tuesday. A warm welcome to the weather forecast for Tuesday. We expect some level of stability over the southern region during the morning hours. The prospect of rainfall activities are from late morning into afternoon where cities around Lagos, Rivers, Cross River, Bayelsa, Delta, including some parts of Enugu, are expected to see a few thunderstorms. The inland cities, including parts of Abuja, Lokoja, and Makodi Axis, should see some patches of cloud, while up north should remain sunny and dry. And that's it from this end. Do keep a date with us. I am Akemi Samarda. And that's the network news tonight. Thank you indeed for watching. My name is Kenan Ima Abodike. Good night.